All right, let me just make sure that we're live here. Okay, we should be good to go now. All right. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is that you are tuning in from. Thanks for joining me again for another round of uh, Kubernetes with ML, so Kubeflow, right? In the last stream, it was uh, on Monday, we started this new series, uh, this new project where we try to use Kubeflow which uh, folks are not familiar with. It's, it's this uh, toolkit for building machine learning workflows on top of Kubernetes, right? And the idea of Kubeflow is that it is, um, it is uh, composable, right? So because it's, it's built from the ground up to, to, to natively support containers and because it's Kubernetes, you're gonna be managing containers and microservices, um, it's supposed to be composable. So you're, gonna be, you're, you're supposed to be able to use containers um, with Kubeflow and, and image and Docker images or any sort of container image to um, essentially build out your uh, data processing, model training, model deployment um, pipelines uh, in, in, in an easy way. Uh, at the same time, it's intended to be portable, again, because you have containers, as long as you can run it, as, as long as your image runs, right, uh, then technically you can, you can run that anywhere, uh, and it's scalable. Right, so that's one of the nice benefits of, of Kubernetes. One of the nice benefits of containers is that you can scale, not only scale up but also scale down as as you need resources. Right. So, last time on Monday we left off at the point where we tried to install um, we we tried to install Kubeflow on the VM. Uh, we had a, a virtual machine up on Azure. And we tried to install Kubeflow on that machine. Now that machine was was fairly underpowered. I think it only had two cores. Uh, it, it had like four gigs of um, of RAM, and uh, I forget. It may have been like 20, 20 uh, gigs of temp storage, right? So it was significantly underpowered. Um, and on top of that, we had already put a lot of stored a lot of data, installed applications, done things on there. Um, so there, there, there wasn't a lot to work with there. So what I did over these past few days since Monday, last night I actually spent some time, uh, and I went ahead and I set up a, a new machine. So so Qflow, uh, I believe that there there is a recommendation that uh, you need to have at least 16 gigs of RAM, right? So that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and, and upgraded my VM or uh, provision a new virtual machine that had the, the minimum requirements for working with Qflow, right? And uh, so with Kubernetes, you have a lot of different deployment options. And and in this case, because it's only going to be for testing purposes, we're really just trying to explore what Qflow is about uh, and, and to see how easy it can be to build these these machine learning workflows with Qflow. Um, I, I decided to go ahead and deploy it as a single node cluster, right? So typically if when you're doing uh, Kubernetes deployments, you t in, in production scenarios, you're gonna want to do it as, as, a, as the multi-node cluster, right? And again, because you get that sort of resiliency, if one of your nodes goes down, uh, also for, for scalability, right? Um, but in our case, we, we don't really care about those things. It's not gonna, necessarily gonna be a production uh, system. It's just for us to, to tinker with and to learn, right? Uh, and to that effort, one of the easiest ways that we can set up Qflow uh, or set up our single node cluster to run Qflow is with micro K8s. Um, and, and that's exactly what we've been using here. Um, so let me go ahead and sign into the VM. So that we can get started. Now, yesterday, I, I went ahead and I tried to provision this new, new VM and, and get Qflow started. So, and that didn't necessarily go as well as, as I would have hoped. Um, and I can kind of show you what I mean by that. So if, if we were to just take a look at Qflow right now, or 
uh, micro K8s. So what are the really neat things about micro K8s? And uh, we can learn a little bit more about it in a, in, a, in a little bit, but let me just show you something. Status. Uh, whoops, it's not that. Micro K8s status. So if we were to invoke that command, uh, we should see all of the different add-ons and, and services that, that Kubernetes uh, provides us with. Now, I don't know if it, if in a uh, traditional, um, how can I say it? In a traditional Kubernetes installation, <clears throat> whether these things are, are, are included by default, my understanding is that uh, you kind of, when you configure your clusters, you kind of have to uh, install add-ons sort of in an ad hoc fashion, right? You might use something like Helm or, or something else to to install and and, and get these uh, services running, right? Um, but in this case, uh, one of the nice things about micro case, and again, like I don't know if this is uh, this is unique to micro K8 so if, or if it's something that Kubernetes actually does come out of the box with, but um, if you're able to see, let me see if I can uh, actually bump, um, let's see, settings. If I can bump up the size of these, uh, of the font here. But essentially what I'm trying to get at is that there's a lot of things that are uh, sort of enabled by default or or that come built in. And all you have to do is you have to enable them. So you have to take micro K8, enable, and you tell it what it is that you want to enable. Um, in this case, uh, we're not going to enable a GPU because this is not a GPU. Um, uh, th th this VM doesn't have a GPU. Um, but let's see here. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, when you're trying to edit the settings here for the uh, the, the Windows terminal, uh, it's a JSON file and there's no GUI. So it would open either Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, right? So, so kind of what I was getting at here is you have uh, things like... Um, like uh, Helm, right, which I just discussed, and, and that's going to allow you to install different add-ons, different packages. Um, you have Ingress, which I believe that that's sort of the networking uh, controller for, for Kubernetes. Uh, you can install DNS. You have a dashboard, which is what's gonna, what allows you to manage uh, your, your Kubernetes cluster uh, in, it with a, in a UI, right? Uh, you have Istio, which uh, my understanding is the storage layer for Kubernetes, you have Jaeger, which is uh, distributed t tracing. I think it came out of uh, Uber, and it's a distributed tracing um, framework uh, or library uh, that's that's basically built of, built on top of uh, Open Tracing, and it's a it's a really nice way when you're when you're uh, working with microservices, right? To be able to to trace your request whenever you make a request, chances are that a request is going to be making um, uh, it's going to be passing through multiple mic of your microservices. So what Yeager allows you to do is it allows you to trace those requests and to see, hey, uh, these are the microservices that are being touched by this particular request. Here's how long it's taking for these requests, right? So it's, it's a nice way to monitor and, and to sort of, uh, yeah, to, to monitor and, and essentially, in, in a sense, be able to debug. Um, the, the other nice thing, right, is that Qflow. Qflow comes out of the box. So for our purposes, all we had to do was, was say, uh, micro K8, enable uh, Qflow. And this, ideally, should work out of the box. Unfortunately, that's, that's not what has happened. Or, you know, between this morning, earlier this morning, and today, maybe, maybe it is working now. So even though, let me actually... Um, See if I can. So I don't see anything here for font size. Let me see if I can go here. Oh, there you go. So it's control and scroll wheel. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Thanks for joining. We're just, uh, yeah, we're just getting started. And I think um, I was just going over a, a bit of a recap of what we did last time. And talking a little bit about micro K8s, um, and uh, uh, yeah, so so control scroll wheel that will sort of blow this up. So so again, Q 
Qflow is already sort of built in to MicroKates or comes comes as an add-on. All you have to do is enable them. And so this is really cool. So as opposed to us setting up our own cluster, uh, MicroKates kind of uh, kind of lets us it, it makes it easier for us to work with these things, right? Now, if I would hope, fingers crossed, that between this morning and and earlier this morning, and now that my Qflow deployment was successful. And I doubt that that's the case because I left it running last night. And when I looked this morning, it, uh, it still wasn't, wasn't deployed. So, so that's unfortunate. So what I, what I would say is prepare yourselves for a, a session. Uh, and actually I'll be streaming for a little bit longer today, but prepare yourselves for a session of excessive Googling, uh, because we're going to try to troubleshoot this deployment and it shouldn't be this hard, right? It, uh, I, I don't think it should be this hard, um, but, but we'll see. And, and hopefully by the end of the stream, we have, uh, at, ideally I'd be, I want to be able to get our notebook server deployed to Qflow, but if we don't get that, I'd be at least happy with having a Qflow, a successful Qflow deployment. So. Um, let's take a quick look at that, right? So tmux, tmux at install q flow. Yep, there you go. So look at how long it's waited. It's waiting 40,000 40, seconds for operator pots to come up. Now, if you if we look back here at micro k8 uh, status. We're gonna see that Qflow is enabled, but for some reason, right? There's Qflow; it's enabled. For some reason, um, it seems like the pods, or and and just to kind of take a step back for folks who may not be familiar with Kubernetes, a pod is like the um, the most basic unit of deployment in Kubernetes. So a pod is typically associated with a container image, right? So a pod will run your container, right? So 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 let's say that you have a web application, an HP.NET Core application, a, a, a Flask, you know, whatever type of application. Um, what you would do is you would create a pod, a service, and you say, um, and maybe I can find, uh, let's see, maybe there's a way for me to illustrate this better than me just explaining it to you. But essentially, it's kind of like a YAML file. So, so the way that you define services and and the way that you define resources in Kubernetes is it's a YAML based in a YAML based format. Uh, so, pod Kubernetes definition. Let's see here, pods. Yeah, Kubernetes. Hopefully they have a nice example here. So, so in Kubernetes you have different things. Uh, it's it's been a while since I've looked at it, so I'm I'm sure that stuff has changed. But you know that you have different resources, and like I said, pods. Um, it's a group of one or more containers. Now, uh, some people. So 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 what what would it mean that that you have one or more containers? So let's say that you have services that are supposed to be coupled together, right? And you want them to be able to communicate. In that case, you would deploy both uh, containers inside of a pod. Um, but, but but most people will tell you uh, that it's probably best practice to just do one one container image or one container per pod, right? And let's see here if it shows you what the format looks like. Um, maybe I can look it up under sample, um, pod preset, pod constraints, disruptions, if I'm ephemeral, no, um, Kubernetes pod, uh, template, maybe we can look at this under template. I, I just want you to get an idea of what it looks like. It, it, it's really not 
you know, once once you kind of like go through it and take a look at it, uh, it's it's not. It, it kind of makes sense. But first, we'd have to find. Okay. There we go. So here's kind of what a pod looks like. Um, here's where you tell it, hey, this is the container that I want, and I and here's the name that I want to give it for my pod, right? And then you tell it the image, right? So this could be uh, pointing to your uh, Docker Hub registry, registry, right? Um, it could be pointing to, um, it could be pointing to your uh, Azure Container registry, Google container registry, basically any registry that you can pull um, the image from, you would essentially uh, list that here, right? And here, all you're telling it, hey, I want this to be version one of, uh, of the uh, API, the Kubernetes API, uh, you give it some metadata, right? Like what, what exactly do you want this thing to be associated with? Um, so so it's, it's really just a YAML file that, that you're describing um, your deployment in, right? So now that we got that done, let's go back and let's take a look at what's going on with our with our pods here, right? So if we go back, um, right, we can see for operator pods to come up, and and it seems to be stuck at this step. So let's see. D. Now let's. Let's search away. Let, let's see. Let's see how good my Google skills are. Put them to the test. And while I'm doing this, uh, how are you folks doing? How's how's your week been so far? Let's see. Um, Q flow. Q flow. Um, operator. That's great, John. It's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. So, so here in the in the U.S. on on uh, what's it called? On well, technically it's Saturday, but Friday it is uh, Independence Day, right? So, so yeah, it's a it's a bit of a short week, which is nice. Uh, at least uh, at Microsoft, we get Friday off, um, and I'm sure a lot of folks uh, are gonna have Fridays off. Right, they're gonna have an extended weekend, but that just means that you have a shorter week, uh, and and uh, it's the end of the, you know, for many folks it's the end of the month, so they're trying to get in. They were yesterday trying to get uh, some final things uh, wrapped up for the month. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's it's been busy as well. But uh, but I, like I said, it's it's gonna be a long weekend. Um, nothing planned, but you know, it's it's gonna be nice having that day off. Um, and yeah, that's that's great to hear, Gregor. That it's, hasn't been too bad, but. Uh, yeah, that's great. And yeah, my, my week, it's been, it's been okay. Like I said, it, just kind of rushing to get a few things uh, sort of strained out, but, uh, but it's going to be nice having the long weekend. I'm thinking of maybe since, you know, there's not much to do, uh, maybe Friday coming on and doing an extra stream. Oh, perfect. It seems that it seems that this is a common issue. So Ubuntu micro K eights. When enabling Kufo and Azure VM with 16 gigs of RAM for CPUs, the waiting operator process seems to be taking a long time. Right now, the service is waiting. Yeah, <laughs> it's taking a lot longer for us. Now, uh, remember when it started with 23, the degrees to gradually increased to 26. Yep. Update. I tried disabling and enabling it, then disabling got stuck, so I killed the process. Now, it says Qflow is disabled. Micro is enabled. It says Qflow has already been enabled. Stuck at this, attaching my Tmux screenshot here. Uh huh. Same issue. The problem is misleading. Okay, it shows that two pods remain and one. In fact, you do their own names. It shows that all pods are running. But if I do Juju status, I see the cert manager control and cert manager warehouse charms are still in maintenance. Uh, latest stable version. If Snap has an automatic updated. Okay. So it seems like has been moved to a separate bundle, which should eliminate this issue. Okay. All right. So let's 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 see what these folks are doing here. Um, and this is nine days ago. Can you update microcase to the latest stable version? 
Snap has a uh, certain manager has been moved to separate vendors that should eliminate this issue. Okay. I mean, that's cool, but. <sighs> but shouldn't. Shouldn't the snaps automatically? Um, let's see. Um, C snap Ubuntu snap. Is there a store for snaps? I don't think there's a store. Oh, there is a snap store. Um, what I'm what, essentially what I'm trying to figure out here is uh, is our um, micro K eights um, snap up to date, or what was when when was it last updated? So there's micro K eights, and it's by canonical. Fine. Uh, June twenty third. Okay. Yep. So we we did it on Monday. So I would assume that we have the latest. Um, that we have the latest version. Smallest, simplest, pure Kubernetes cluster, laptops, IoT, developer website. Okay, let's see. Let's see what these folks here are talking about. So, if I were to do uh, micro k eight dot cube cuddle get to all namespaces. The server doesn't have a resource type two. Um, for a detailed description of that resource, explain pods. Okay, status of pod. Oh, I mean, I know what a pod is. Get pods. No researchers found in the default namespace. Microcades. Okay, so let's see this thing. True, true status. Okay, cool. So. So there's an error here. These are in maintenance. I guess my question is, how do I know Dex. Okay, so Katib, that's part of Qflow. Metadata is part of Qflow. Minio, I don't think it is. Model DB kind of sounds like it. Mm, and then pipelines, it sounds like it. Okay, let's see. Qflow still can over post come up. So this is March 27th. I guess the most recent one is this one here. But maybe somebody else already resolved this issue. Nice, there's Qflow Mac machine, but I'm sure something it's a bug. Same soon, the file network with Qflow, attached to the output micro case inspect. Control C, it's just awful. Okay, fresh Ubuntu, NVIDIA CUDA driver, just done this. Enable Qflow. Right, so in this case, in this case, I think what these folks did was they could you please try following work around while Qflow pods are coming up in open second terminal, they civil are back. Yeah, but our our back is disabled. So what what this is saying is that you should disable our back. But if we go to um, micro k okay, a dot cube cuddle, 
uh, status. Oh, sorry, no, it's micro K8 status. Status. We can see that our back and and our back is uh, role based uh, access control. I think that's what it stands for, role based access control. Uh, it's disabled, right? So so this wouldn't fix our issue. Um, when adding more editing arguments, starting micro case, so better than that. Am I right that after pod should stay disabled? Okay, it's based on looking to see Juju. It was the cause, and I don't believe that is. For my setup, it looks as though our back is broken in a micro case as the API is serving a hard time validating service accounts. Keep with no user. Describe Apple for some of the pods and starting up before they get narrow. Down for. Are due to invalid characters in the host name, e.g., capital letters. Okay. Let's see. Micro K8 stop. Inspect. Okay, so there should be something in C. Let me copy this. That way I have something to refer to. So this is a report, and I'm not exactly sure what we're expecting to see here. But I'm trying to get notepad here. Notepad. Once we get past this, I, I hope that it gets easier and not harder. Um, and you would have think that you would have thought that micro case would have made it easier to, to get started with this, but yeah, I guess not. Var snap. Have uh, have you folks worked with uh, Kubernetes before? Let's see. Um, This one, micro K8, so pseudo, no. Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I, I briefly work with it in the past, um, But it seems like everything is kind of like, uh... yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, Th that's been my experience as well. That uh, using Docker Swarm is um, a, a little easier in in my in my experience. Um... Yeah, Kubernetes, it's it's like it's it's something else. Um, and definitely takes a while. Like, it, that's why you know you have you ha you have folks who um, this is their their full time job, right? Like making sure that these Kubernetes deployments are uh, you know running and configured correctly and stuff like that. Because there is just so much to grasp um, around Kubernetes, right? Like once once you have Kubernetes working, it's it's and, and you got like a flow going. It's pretty easy, but like getting getting it set up, um, that's that's where the hard part comes in. Um, let's see, pseudo tar. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. One four four. Okay, that worked. Now, uh, is there a Q flow? Let me see. 
see here. Tar. Okay, so it's it's an inspection report. Cool. All right, so we go to inspection report. What's here? A snap, micro kate, statement container, API server. Okay, which one am I supposed to be looking at though? Um, could you share, inspect, uh, display in the denials? Juju, K A S. API server, daemon API server. Okay, so let's take a look at daemon API server. Um, snap. Daemon API server. Last, uh, let me look at the journal. Okay. So what's going on here? Um, let's see here. that work awesome trying to get to the bottom here trying to see the last oh there it is there it is there it is, there it is. Uh, q flow pods user agent juju It's not. How do we get? Let's see. I want to get to the end of the file. Linux last end of file. Effective navigation. I want to get to the end of the file. So G. And now it's just, oh, there it is. There's the end. Uh, okay. Uh, Bod writer response. So ingress. Yeah, this isn't telling me anything, or at least not, not nothing that I could figure out what it says. Can Atlas resource services cluster wide? back though all right let me let me try let me try disabling this all right team xls install cube let's start let's stop this Fail to enable Qflow. Okay. Now, if I do Q, no, uh, micro K8. You know, I'm tired of typing this. So I'm going to be lazy and say, um, do I have Emacs on here? I don't. Sudo apt. Let's go with the snap. Install Emacs. Sudo snap install emacs 
This version of Snap Emacs was published, including classic confinement as may reform arbitrary changes. Emacs and I'm gonna create an alias for this uh, micro k8 because I'm too lazy to type micro k8 every time all right so while that's happening let's see if we can find other things Qflow 1.0 add-on, right? Because in March, this uh, I wonder which version of uh, micro K8s I have. Check which version of micro K8s is installed. I would assume it's only micro K8s. Micro K8s. Dash dash version. Nope, that's not it. configuration needed. Well, that's a lie because it's taken me a really long time to get this working. So clearly it's not as easy as either I'm, I'm completely missing something or yeah. <clears throat> Let's, um, Okay, I have that 20 gigs and 4 gigs, yes, and internet connection. Okay. Can you uninstall a snap? Um, the only the only thing that I can I can think of is this here. I didn't tell it what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it's always like that. Or it's like easy, one click, one click install, and uh, yeah, it, it it's never just one click. Um, let's see here. Okay, fine. Is Emacs and uh, I would assume that to install snaps, you just do sudo snap uninstall. Like what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of, um, K eight altogether. Disabling. No, I want to, how to remove snap from Ubuntu. Essentially, I want to blow away um, micro K8. I want to start fresh. And what I do want to do is I want to be able to um, to say that I want the latest stable version. I don't know which version I got. The thing is that version 1.18 is the one from March 26th, right? And if we were to take a look at this first issue here, which is, where's the one? 
this one here, right? It seems like this is a most more recent issue. So I wonder if there is a way to set the channel. Uh, let's see. All right, more about setting the channel. Yeah. I probably want the bleeding edge because it seems to have gotten the, the, the most recent fix. So they're stable. Okay, let's see. Snap info micro cades. I want to know which one's installed. Kubernetes for workstations, okay. Which one is installed? Yeah, so the latest one is 1.18.4, stable. Yeah, I have 1.18.4 installed which means I have the latest version. So I don't have to get rid of, uh, let's see. Um, did my Emacs installation stop? Tmux installed, uh, Qflow. Okay, Emacs. So Emacs dot bash dot bash bash RC. Do you folks have a, like a preferred CLI um, or command line text based editor? I for some reason I I find. Um, I find Emacs a little bit more intuitive. Um, I, you know, VI or Vim, it's it's nice, but um, I really like the accessibility of of Emacs and the fact that you don't have to remember how to exit it, or there's not like so many different ways of of exiting Emacs. Um, but yeah, that's just my personal preference. Alias K eight equal equals what micro k8 okay uh, uh, uh. cool bash rc there it is No. Uh, cool. Source dot bash. See to refresh this. Okay. And what am I doing now? I'm going to test. K8. It's a K. Awesome. Okay. So. Kate status. Qflow says it's enable. Kate uh, dot disable Qflow. All right, so. Disable Qflow, and while you're disabling, let's go back here. So, enable disabling available add-ons. Okay, let's take a look at the add-ons here. 
So Helm, it's a package manager, host access, simple controller for external access, Istio services, Jaeger, Juju. I want to find out what Juju is. Apparently, if that's causing trouble, uh, Qflow Juju bundle. What What is Juju? What is Juju? It's a state of open source model modeling tool for operating software in the cloud. Juju allows to deploy configure management maintain. Uh, application, modern environments, application, deploy isolation. Okay, like a database. Okay. Traditional configure management like Chef and Puppet or even general scripting such as Python Bash automate the configuration of machines. So, sounds like infrastructure as code type of deal here. Um, what is the Juju Qflow bundle? Bundle deploys Juju K H model. The individual charm update bundle can be found in charms. So you need a <laughs> That's funny. Uh, if you're on a Mac or Windows, you'll need Ubuntu. So just get Ubuntu. Okay. Um multi pass launch game. Okay. But sixteen gigs is recommended. Less than may run into issues with pods coming up properly. Um The only thing that I'm going to say that there might be a problem with here is they recommend 16 gigs, and I think I have 14. If that's the case, then... Yeah, that could, that could, be, that could be a problem. Okay, so, so let's, let's try this one more time. Boulder Dash, WSL2. Yeah, WSL2, that's nice. Yeah, uh, um, Docker worked, uh, I think, with, with the team and, and the team worked with, with the Docker folks to uh, to get that working. So that's really cool because um, I'm, I'm sure you you had the experience, uh, like you said, of docking, working with Swarm and, and Docker containers. Um, the Windows experience wasn't great. Uh, it, 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 there, had a, there was much to be desired there. And... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember when uh, this it was about a year ago, the, the last time that I uh, that I maybe a little bit over a year ago that I was using um, Docker on Windows and uh, the experience was just it, it was bad, like because um, like be, so. So the problem that I had was that Windows. So it needed to ver number one, you needed to have um What's it, what's it called? Um, you need to have Hyper-V uh, enabled, right? So that's that's number one. You had to have Hyper-V, and Hyper-V only works with, um, it only works with, uh, I, I, at the time, it only worked with uh, Windows, what was it, Professional? Whatever the non-home or, or like basic edition of Windows. Yeah, there you go, Windows 10 Pro. Yeah, so it only worked, and, and right, so you can only use Hyper-V with Windows 10 Pro. And then, uh, because you had Hyper V, what one of the things that it would do, at least for me, it was it had to virtualize the um, the network, right? So what would happen is Docker would force my internet connection or like my Wi-Fi to connect to the virtualized uh, to the virtualized network um, adapter, which was non-existent. And as a result, like I'd be you know in the middle of a call or something like that, or on the internet, and out of nowhere, my internet would go out because Docker was trying to or trying to force um my uh my computer to connect to this to this virtualized network and it was just it, it was a pain every time so i was just like you know what forget it I'm getting rid of it but uh yeah long story short yes it, it's it's nice to see that wsl2 now has uh docker support and, and it and it's native right so it's not like wsl2 had to uh hack around it right it's 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 native support so so that's nice All right, so let's do let's do this. Let's let's set up a VM that has all the requirements that they asked for. So I 
this is the, which which makes me think right like what i'm what i'm thinking now is like and maybe i misunderstood like micro k8s so like micro k8s you can install it on a raspberry pi it's, at least it seems you can right which Raspberry Pi has 16 gigs of memory? Like that's, and and I get it, right? I get that. I get that. Micro K8 is not does not equal Qflow, right? Like you can you can install Qflow as part of Micro K8s, but you're not gonna get 16 gigs of RAM on your Raspberry Pi with Micro K8s. So why does it want me to have 16 gigs? Furthermore. What if I was trying to test this out on my laptop? Uh, this makes me think that I can't, right? That that in, in order to have these setups, I have to have some sort of server or cluster, right? which which makes sense. In a production environment, you want a cluster. But if I was just trying to test something out, right, and I didn't have 16 gigs of memory, like, for example, my, my the, the computer that I'm streaming on now, it only has 8 gigs, right? So that, that thing's barely running Windows. I'm surprised it's even running my stream. Um so yeah, it's yeah, it's a little bit frustrating, but let's 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 go with their suggestions and um, see if we can do better. So uh, let's go back here. Oh, this thing is still. You know what? Forget it. I'm gonna get rid of you. So. Yeah, I apologize, folks. That it hasn't uh, it hasn't been the most entertaining experience or the most um, uh, what is it educational? Yeah, the most educational. Um, but yeah, the good thing is. Uh, once it's done this, you, you, you can put it on your resume. Um, I know all the ways that Qflow with micro K8s doesn't work. So hopefully that counts for something. Stream Qflow RG. Let's get rid of this one. Let me move this off to the side here a, a little bit. And let me delete the resource group. And while that's going on, <clears throat> let's see here. Let's take a look at what which VM we're gonna want. So uh, Azure Linux Virtual VM. Okay, so what does Juju want? Juju says 16 gigs of memory is recommended. Okay. I'll give you 16 gigs. So let's see, Azure Linux VM sizes. Let's take a look at pricing as well while we're at it because I don't intend on getting charged a whole lot for these. Oh, I could have just resized it. Mm. That's all right. Okay, so I want, well, before we go here, I want a general purpose machine. I don't care about uh, perhaps the AV2 series. Um, okay, so this one has eight, 16 of memory and 80. A A V two. Uh, how much would this cost? Sixty four and eighty. A A M V two. So it's memory optimized. So I want Linux running on it. I want to be in the East U S. Uh, standard. I want it to be low priority. Um, one virtual machine, and I want it to be A A. V, so 16 gigs versus 64, this one here. Okay. 
It's a little pricey. Uh, because as opposed to a 8v2, it's about half the cost. Okay, no worries. We can always shut it off when we're not using it. Yeah. So while this is happening, let me, uh, and I apologize that I'm not showing this on. Worth more than the marketing demos. Yeah, the, the happy path. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I was sucked in because I was like, all right, you know, Qflow, it looks like it's pretty simple and I'm not going to have to bother with Kubernetes, but... Uh, we have learned what Juju is. We've learned about micro K eights. We've learned a, a whole bunch of stuff uh, along the way. So yeah, yeah. Let's see. Refresh. Q flow. All right. So let me add a resource group. So create, and then we're going to go ahead. Yep. So this is what we're going to want. We're going to want an A8 um, MB2. Okay. Yeah. Pay as you go. Actually, it's not, it's not twice as much 58 to 69. So it's an extra $10 and we get four times the, uh, the, the, the Ram. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, and what I want to do here is, so let me go ahead and um, I want to add something. I want to add a, um, what's going on here? I want to add a server, Ubuntu 18.04. You know, you know what's going to be interesting is, so I don't, I don't know if you recall, uh, well, last time we were having this conversation where, um, you know, about snaps and how some, some Linux distributions, well, Ubuntu in this case, right, is mainly the one that, that's going this, the snap route. Um, and it seems that micro K8s, uh, it's really easy to install with snaps and, and, and I don't, I don't know if I saw a way to install it without a snap. So it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, how, how it becomes sort of a chore to, to, to get these, these systems, which I, which I think are, are very, you know, it should be easy to set them up or, or uh, how can I put this? Um, these systems that, that are, are extremely powerful that now if you're running anything other than Ubuntu, um, you're sort of, um, you have a, a poor experience, right? Um, and, and, and what I'm thinking, right, is like, okay, fine, Ubuntu, it's, it's very popular. And especially for desktop scenarios, right? It's, um, it's probably one of the easiest ones to get started with. Uh, that being said, though, um, you know, for perhaps you might want to do something, use something other than Ubuntu, right? You might want to use Fedora, or you might want to use CentOS, right? Depending on what it is that your enterprise has, and and if that's if that's what you're using, then in that case, uh, your experience when when installing and 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 configuring these systems, right, it may not exactly be the the best. So so that you know, it's just unfortunate. All right, what's my VM machine? VM, um, Qflow, VM, sure, East, 1804, I do want a spot instance, uh, capacity, I want, nope, select size, A8 
AAB, AAM V2. Okay, select uh, my password. select the ports okay let's do those um, see disks nope yeah, I think this is okay management sure let's just go to review and create Yeah, it's, it's not much much more so so before we actually had 16 gigs I, I don't know why I thought that we had 14 we actually have 16 um, and and even at 16 the minimum requirement it was having trouble so let's deploy 64 gigs of RAM which is way more than it needs and and if this doesn't work then we'll have to think of a different uh, then we'll have to kind of try to try to debug this thing um, and, and troubleshoot it. But in the meantime, let's see here. This is going... Let's keep exploring K8s. So let's see, what are the available add-ons? There's DNS. You always enable it. You need to uh, upstream DNS servers. There's the dashboard. Ingress, Istio. Oh, cool. Okay. So if we want to configure things, it's in this folder. Uh, container D is a runtime. I create to manage images and execute containers. Okay. Kubernetes controller is a daemon that an American controller of loops at CD. Supports the components. Flannel. CNI gives subnet. Okay. Kubelet is a node agent that runs on each node. Okay, so this is basically what communicates with the control, um, like with the controller, if you will, the sort of orchestrator. Uh, there's a proxy, there's and there's a scheduler. Okay. What's this authentication and authorization thing? Creates a certificate, assi a signed server certificate. Okay, that's what the certificates. All IP address lands, Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Kicker will automatically detect the risk, generate new certs, and restart the API. Your DNS keep config. Okay. There's our back, which it said, I remember from that other issue, that we shouldn't enable our back, which is fine. Roll and cluster roll. So Istio. What is Istio? How are they adopting? Okay, what is service mesh? Mesh is challenged to follow operators face monolithic towards distributed microservices. See how it helps more detail. Okay. That make up such applications, interactions between them, search engines and size and complexity can become harder to understand and manage. Yeah, I mean, we haven't even grown our uh, application. We're trying to install micro K8s and it's already uh, complex and hard to understand. Discovery, load balancing, failure recovery, metrics, monitoring. Service mesh also has complex additional A-B testing, canary rollouts, rate limiting. Behavioral insights and operational control of the service mesh as a whole. Okay. Fine. 
Um, is this thing still deploying? Go to resource. All right. Here's the moment of truth here. Just let's walk to the side a bit. And let's open this up here. Let's run the update and let's run the upgrade. Um, and then let's go ahead and install. So let's go based on Juju's documentation because Juju seems to be the one that this is. You need to install your snaps to get started. Pseudo snap install Juju. Oh, but this is with um, this is with Michael Cades. Okay. Let's go with this. So it's so interesting that if you look at the Juju uh, setup and if you look at the Qflow one, it, it's, it's very different. Like if we go here to, um, like for example, if we go here to, um, oops. Ubuntu micro no is my case no Qflow. So if we go to this section here, right? It's just like oh, uh, do this, do that, and then do this, and you're all good to go. But because Juju is the one that's supporting it, right? Um, and if we go by the Juju installation guide, the setup. It's um, it's different, right? Come on, I was manually setting up a public that will help you access Qflow microcades. In some deployment scenarios, you may need to configure microcades to line DNS instead of default. Ba -ba -ba -ba. For these config magic command, okay. Okay, so this was last updated in on February 24th, which was before the 1.0 release of Qflow. But we'll see. Let's see. So sudo lab upgrade. Why? Okay. And let's upgrade everything. We'll assume you're running from the Qflow directory. So Charm Kubernetes, that's different. By default, this bundle deploys Dex configured with basic login credentials. Dex is able to you to such as what is Dex? <clears throat> no, I want to know what Dex is. So like a oh, Open ID, Connect ID, pluggable connectors. Okay, so Kubernetes index. Dex main, pro main production use is this off and add on core OS enterprise Kubernetes solution, Tectonic. Runs native on the top of the cluster and third party resources can drive API server authentication through the OpenID Connect plugins, okay, Tectonic. So you have a client app, you have Dex. Okay, there's a strategy used by Dex for authenticating a user against another identity provider. 
influence connectors target specific okay so dex is like the authentication piece and as it relates to juju you have a basic Like, uh, uh, Juju sets up, like, a basic configuration for it. Dex is able to use other services for other switches, okay? To, okay, but I don't want to. I want to just leave it as a default, uh, right? Configure Dex, static username, static password. Uh, if you like to disable the default basic credentials, run Juju Dex off static username, okay? So let's disable it. We might have to disable the authentication. Well, actually, no. If I disable it, then that means that um, anybody could log into this server. So... Maybe not what we want. Okay, so this is done. All right, let's try this again. We have enough RAM. We have enough of everything. No, thank you, CC. I'm just trying to install this. Okay, so it's getting it from the stable channel, and I should have uh, sudo snap 18, version 1.18.4. see here so two about two three hours later and we're back to square one here trying to still uh, set up micro k8s to to run Qflow I, I really do hope that once we get this set up, that the payoff is like, yes, like this is how I want to do machine learning workflows from now on. I hope. I'm being very optimistic here because so far it's been a very frustrating experience. Yep, 1.18.4. That's the latest one. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to enable this right you can enable this with the following commands question is do i want to enable those let's go back to the qflow documentation documentation getting started install I want a single node deployment nope okay yep okay let's see all right so I have to do this right which fine Oh, right, I need to log off. Okay. Tmux. Tmux. Q. Flow. Okay. No. This one. Status. Dash dash. Wait. Ready. Yeah. So it, it, it takes a while for this. So micro K8 is running. And I have these add-ons which are all disabled. Okay. So if you have a GPU, run that. I I don't, so let me just enable these. Okay, enable Kubernetes dashboard, metrics, cluster. Okay, storage will be available soon. Okay, let me 
things. Oh, well, I think I think I have this. So let's see what happened here. Uh, certificates created, created, created. Uh, Kubernetes dashboard. So there's RBAC authorization created. If RBAC is not enabled, access the dashboard using the following token retrieved here. Okay. So let me move this off to the side so I can have the token. So now that I have my token, um, now I should be able to just enable. But before that, micro k eight status. Just make sure. So it's running. Dashboard is enabled. DNS is enabled. Storage is enabled. Our back is disabled. Q flow for the moment is disabled. So. on that okay enabling storage enabling dashboard ingress okay so it's deploying this thing is going let's see here H top oh there you go there's a course so in the other one I think we had two course in the in the other uh, what's it called VM so now we have a course look at it it's not even using any of them um, and we have 64 gigs nice let's quit this for now Proport number for ambassador and for Jupyter notebook servers. Okay. So let's see, dashboard. It's taking a while again. Okay, common issues. Okay, that's interesting. a few of these Istio micro k8 Okay, so we failed, and why did we fail? Creating Juju controller UK8 micro localhost. Creating KS controller UK8 failed to bootstrap. 
fetching pod status controller at CD server. Okay, so if I recall, there was something about Juju install micro K. It's user. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so do I have to Okay, so so it looks like okay, so next you will need to add yourself. Yeah, there's no micro case. There's no UK eights. Fail to enable Q flow. Okay. And what was it that we did before? The whole R back thing. Uh, micro K eights. What was it? Authentication? No. It was this R back thing. check something here um, it was what is it our back yeah no this is the same thing pseudo user mod okay so this isn't helping I guess you have to create a new group. Is that right? Okay. My question is, where are the scripts? So it's telling me C snap. My So there's nothing here. I'd love to know where, where, where these scripts are. It's like, yeah, run these scripts. I'd love to, if you told me where they are. supposed to be like a python thing like like a python 3 
see. Nope, it wouldn't be here. Where would... Let's see. Uh, where is the Python? Python 3 uh, installations path uh, Ubuntu. Maybe it's inside of... Nope, that is 12.04. We're looking for 18 or 20. I'm trying to find out. Maybe this is something that's inside of the uh, of the Python. Python, uh, okay, supporting. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, sudo install software. Okay. This doesn't help. Where is the boom to eighteen point four? Where is Python installed? No, I don't want to know how to install. I want to know where. bin python there you go bin python there we go there we go three uh is there a cli here cli.py Let's grab CLI. Nope. All right, let's go back here. Did I lose? Okay, yeah, so it's here. Uh, setup controller UK. There was set up. The deploy to command allows you to setting public address that is used for accessing micro -cades. In some deployments, you may need to configure instead of the default to do this. Yeah, I'm not trying to get rid of it though. I'd love to know where these scripts are. Clone the bundle Qflow projects. Um, I didn't, but I can try that because I think, so here in the setup, right? This one is if you are on Mac or Windows, so it's telling you to create the VM, but you know what? Let's let's try it because, um, yeah, it's possible. Let's see, if I go here, let's take a look at, <clears throat> oh, will you look at that? Uh, I wonder if there's a way to yeah 
This is bad. This is terrible documentation. Because here, right, it's like, okay, the setup, but this, like, if you're a Mac or Windows, do this. So does this also apply to Windows? And it looks like, no, that's not the case. Oh, the, the below commands assume that you're running them from bundle directory. Okay, fine. All right, let's, let's clone this somewhere. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's frustrating, but hopefully the payoff in the end is a running Qflow server. Um, okay, so what do they want us to do? I keep... There we go. Okay, so we did that. Now we want to do micro K8 setup. Controller UKAS. This is literally doing what we just did, which was to enable DNS storage dashboard. Okay, what's the error? Oh, this is. Oh, okay. I see what the error is. So. That is. Where's Juju? There's no Juju here, is there? Okay, so we need to set up Juju before we do this, which means we need to do this. Okay. Uh, let me just do this somewhere else. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. being good citizens. Because I do appreciate what the folks here are doing, right? This, like, I'm pretty sure the, like, if it's been this painful for us to do today, I can't even imagine how it would be if you had to do everything from scratch. So, let's, I'm not going to do it now, but maybe the next stream, what we can, wow, I think we're getting thunderstorms here. Um. So maybe we'll be good citizens and see if there's a way that we can contribute to the documentation because it's not clear. Like, so for example, if you do, if we go to, where is it? Ubuntu, right? So if you do this, right? It's like, oh, just do this, then enable stuff and then enable Qflow. That's it. You should be able to get up and running, right? And then just access your IP. Clearly, that's not the case. And then if you go to the Juju documentation, right? Um, which is what? This one? There's a few things that you need to do, but then it's not clear. It's like, oh, if you're using Mac OS or Windows, do this. But then, like, is this part of the Mac or Windows piece? Like, it's not, it's not clear. So maybe we can help these folks with their documentation and getting started experience. Um because we would like to help others who want to do exactly what we're doing. And also for our sake, if we forget something, it's, it's a way for us to come back and be like, Hey, it's better. And, and, you know, it's just being part of being a, a, a good citizen. Like I said, I appreciate what these folks are doing. It's a little frustrating, but I can't imagine how much more frustrating it would be if we had to do everything from scratch. Right. So let's, uh, Okay, so Juju is installed. Let's do this one now. Classic. Okay. And then let's set this one up. <clears throat> what is this? Now Juju is not available. 
pre-release channels. Juju Help is not available on stable, but it's available installed on the following. Super Smash install Edge. Snap install dash dash Edge. That's what I have to do. She's using class. Okay, so do I have to do both? Okay, so this is the edge. Documentation, and we need to improve Qflow. Okay. All right, so now that we have this, I wonder now if we have this, if we can just, so now that we have Juju installed, can we not renounce CC? I wonder if it could just be as easy as doing this. <clears throat> because this is essentially what that other script was doing for us. And then if this works, then I wonder if we could scale down back to 16 gigs. That way we're not, you know, we don't have the extra $10 to, that we're paying on this virtual machine. We'll see. Deploying Qflow. Okay. All right. So if this doesn't work, let's just see what else. L let's see in the meantime, can we contribute to these folks' uh, documentation here? So this seems to be the documentation that they are doing. Okay, so. Okay, let's raise an issue for now. Actually, I'm gonna have to log in to do this. Um, this is still going. Let's put it off to the side for now. And let's see if we can help these folks out. Mm, I'm gonna have to log in with my account. Give me one second here. So let's let's raise an issue here. Um, and what was our issue? First of all, let's make sure that no that people have not closed. Katib misleading text printed juju Q for deployed to CKKF. Okay. So there's no issue open at the moment. But before we do that, let's just make sure. Take a snipping tool. Okay. Let's just um, grab this. Okay, issue. Okay, so our deployment is still going. Um, let's raise a new issue, first of all, and we'll try to um, fix it ourselves, but we just wanna at least create the issue first, and then we want to go ahead and, and um, fix it ourselves. So let's see, uh, documentation, okay. In the um, deploying setup section, it's unclear that 
that the um, that the that uh, a few snaps had to be installed to clear that a few true true snaps had to be installed. Um, therefore, when um, when uh, what is it? When deploying, enabling Qflow, the um, I don't know. There are errors. Okay, preview. Let's see. Boom. Awesome. All right. Submit new issue. So, <clears throat> what we're gonna do now is we are going to we're gonna fork it, All right? And we're gonna fork it here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Juju Solutions Bundle Qflow. Cool. Um, just all right. So it's still deploying. Uh, let's just go here. Okay. So these are a few things. To touch. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Uh, stream projects. Uh, should we do this as part of the stream projects? No, I think this serves its own thing. Uh, so git clone. This probably deserves its own thing. So let's Okay. Now I want to go to CD bundle. Is it bundle Qflow? Uh, get remote B, and let's add uh, this one as a remote branch because eventually what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, push it upstream, right? So let's go get uh, remote add upstream. Okay. And get remote B. All right, so now we have that one as upstream. And what do we want now? Get branch. What's the, what's the issue that we have here? Issue number 216. So how, how do you folks like to uh, manage issues? So the or when I do branches and when they're associated with issues, I like to call my branches by their issue name. That way I have a way of referencing, uh, you know, what it is that I'm working on. So for example, in this one, right, what I'll do is I'll call git checkout b issue uh, 216, right? Uh, git branch, there we go, issue 216. Code, let's see, code, uh, readme, right? So it was the readme, the one that want to take a look at here and what I what I what I think that we should do here to make it just just a little bit clearer that this is like a um, maybe we might want to push videos less than that may run to pause not coming up properly so what we might want to do here is we might want to maybe make this kind of like a uh, um, Uh, what do you call it? Like a block quote, right? So that way it's kind of like, kind of like a, hey, by the way, if you're doing this, you know, this way you're going to want to do. Um, otherwise, this is actually what you want to run. Uh, 
yeah, let's see how we can make this, how we can improve upon, improve upon this. Um, let's see here. Uh, deploying control shift B, right? So let's get a preview going. I want to have it side by side. I want to see how this looks. Okay. What happened to my preview? No, that's not what I wanted. B. Okay. And you, here. Okay. Um, while this is happening, let's see how our thing is doing here. All right, so something's happening. Our pods are coming up. But then again, if we recall, that's exactly what was happening last time. So I don't fully trust it. Oh, Qflow deployed. And now, all right, so fingers crossed that this is working. Oh, wow, you heard that? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's actually really nice. It would be nice if I didn't have to work today and I could just curl up in the couch and watch movies. But uh, unfortunately, there is work to be done. Speaking of work, let me... Give me one second. Just make sure that I have no meetings coming up. <laughs> uh, I think I don't have one until uh, about an hour from now. So let's, okay, so this is still going. But it, it, okay, so it seems to be working 27, 26, 25. Just make sure here that I'm not missing any meetings with anybody and that I'm not leaving anybody hanging. Um, okay, so this is kind of what this looks like, deploying setup. If you're on my, okay, so um, let's see. Maybe we can say setting up Juju. Um, Qflow requires uh, setting up this bundle requires a what? A Ubuntu VM. All right, make it clear. If you are Second, let's see. Okay, I think that's nice, right? Like, set up this one, and then yeah, because so, so with this, um, actually, hold on, let me see. Yeah, I like this. So, 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 if you folks can see kind of what we've done here is, um, sorry, let me just check my calendar real quickly here. Yeah, I'm good for another hour. Okay. So if you folks see kind of what we're doing here, right? It's like hey, we're telling you up front. I'm, I'm, you know, we're we're telling them up front. Setting up this bundle requires a, a Ubuntu VM, right? Up front, there's no, you know, uh, there's no question about it. You need to have Ubuntu. Now, if you're on Mac OS or Windows, kind of like as an aside, like hey, like you need Ubuntu, but if you're running on these other things, 
here's the thing that you need to do. And then we continue. That way, like, the Mac OS and Windows piece is sort of an aside. And, uh, and uh, you know, then you realize, okay, well, the rest of the stuff is you, you need to follow this, right? So, um, and actually, we might even get rid of this. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I think, I, th I think this looks, hopefully, this looks a little bit better. Um, let's see. So now if we go here, take a look at. Why is it not registering any changes? That's weird. Let's see, get status. Oh, I think I know why. It's because I don't have the entire, I don't have the entire um, uh, directory open. So it can't access the Git, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the hidden Git folder, but fine. Git status, git add, git status, git commit. Clar clarified um, uh, setup instruction. Instructions. Uh, sure. Git config global use that email. Configured automatically based on your username and hosting. Please check that they are accurate. Oh, um, I screwed this one up. Okay. Uh, get. Git push origin issue two sixteen. Okay. Cool. So now that we've pushed these changes up, let's take a look and see what it looks like. Um, compare pull request. So made clear that you need Ubuntu to install this uh, bundle. really optional as uh, a block quote so um, users don't assume that the entire setup is only only for Mac Windows sure good enough and then this one fixes fixes number what is it 218 6 to 16 yeah. Um, yeah, I like this. Well, that's going. Let's see how well our thing is doing here. Oh, come on. So something about this thing fail to enable Qflow. All right. So let's go. Let's go back to Juju. And let's try running the scripts. So 
we're here. City bundle. Q flow. All right, let's try this. Time, let's take a look at our pull request. Nope. Pull request, clarify setup instructions. Uh, let's see what, um, let's see what our file looks like. Yeah, I like this. I like this. It's like an aside. And it doesn't distract the user from the fact that they still have to do this. All right, good enough. Feel proud. It's not, it's not much, but it's decent, and it's hopefully helps uh, folks, some folks. Um, meanwhile, this thing seems to be stuck here. So I think we spent what three, two, three, no, three hours since ten. Two hours here plus the the hour that we spent uh, on Monday, just trying to set this this thing up. Um, yeah, I mean, I major props to the folks who 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 do this. Um, guess that's why they get paid the big bucks. So you're enabling the dashboard. <clears throat> Just already enabled. I mean, this is exactly what, um, what we're doing before with the enable queue flow. We enable the dashboard storage, DNS and ingress. And this metal LB. So while that's going, um, there's something that I want to play with at some point. Uh, what's the name of it? What's new Apple ML Shoot Yeah. So <clears throat> I was reading this article the other, well, yesterday. There's quite a few things that are that are really neat here that I would like to um, tinker with at some point. Uh, especially, I, I like to uh, at some point um, try out CoreML. I, I I did very briefly sometime in the past, uh, but you know it's only gotten better. And what CoreML kind of allows you to do is it's um, from my understanding, it allows you to like run. Um, your uh, like it, allow, it allows you to run your machine your machine learning models, right? Um, so 
yeah, I, I, I'd like to be able to eventually get a ML.NET model and deploy it and run it using it, using core ML, right? And I think that we have access to, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, Xamar, Xamarin Core ML. I think Core ML, uh, Xamarin, there you go. Uh, Xamarin has bindings for Core ML. All right, so there you go. Getting started with Core ML. Uh, it's a little bit dated. Let's see, it's Core ML 2. Okay, a little bit dated as well, but. Um, but this is cool, right? <clears throat> so once you have a model, uh, you can use Xamarin to to um, to basically run and 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 score your machine learning models. Of course, machine technology like TVOS make predictions based on machine learning models. Yeah. So this is something that I that I like to, to, to play with at some point. Um, so so core ML is one one thing. There's model encryption, which is, which looks interesting. Um, there's this model viewer, which from the sound of it, 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 it it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, Netron. So if you if you folks are not familiar with Netron, it's a way to visualize uh deep learning models specifically onyx uh and i think i think it's got a few yeah visualize neural network deep learning and machine learning models right i've used it for onyx and 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 this is essentially what it looks like right so there's this um just brings me back to the same place yeah so it's 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 an electron app and you basically Programming for Monix or they go common format. Um, that's a good question. I think CoreML allows you to. I think you could convert Onyx to CoreML, but I don't think CoreML scores Onyx models. I could be wrong, but let me see. Onyx CoreML. Yeah, so you'd have to convert Onyx to CoreML. Um, but but you can't directly score onyx models with core ml yeah so oh it's no longer supported or maintained interesting code for onyx core ml uh is now available through core ml tools python package um okay core ml tools oh okay all right so so i guess it moved under here Core ML model conversion. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 to answer the question, uh, yeah, I believe Core ML is its own format. And you basically, oh come on, what what is wrong here? Since Juju run for the first time, download the latest public cloud information. Call UKS already exists on the KAS cluster. Please bootstrap again and choose a different controller name. Okay, so if it's already created, can we just do this then? Let's set the queue. Cannot work out how to connect. Cannot control the control queue is not found. Okay. Um, please bootstrap again and choose a different. So you're telling me that it's already there. Controllers, okay. Hmm. 
All right, so what if we choose another name? try a different name uk 8 s 2 yeah so sorry I, I don't i forgot if i answered the question but yeah coreml is its own format um let's see for example devices i mail task my current device i uh, will reach and i think about a new laptop current trying to decide between mac pro 2020 xps 13 um yeah that's that's interesting so um I think so. I, I don't know if you followed the recent announcement that Apple will be kind of making a transition to ARM uh, based devices. I think the fact that I, I don't know if there's a, like a right or wrong answer here. So I think the Apple's ability to control everything down to the silicone uh, is gives them the ability to optimize for these works. So I, so I think I think they may have a chip just like they have for I think for AR they have a chip that specifically or or a, a um yeah I I guess that's what you call it right like a chip, like a chip that's specifically intended for running uh, machine learning workflows and scoring machine so 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 you're not really uh you know um you're not utilizing the resources that you know our, your phone ne necessarily uses um but instead you are uh it's a it's a dedicated um processor for ai right so so on 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 ipad on your your on your phone right like you you get that right and and they're able to optimize for those scenarios um in terms of working with with pc so so the mac that i have it's a 2013 um macbook air and it's it's great it's great but obviously it's not it's it's not the um it's not the it doesn't have the latest and greatest right um and it's 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 pretty pretty uh low spec if you will right it's it's got i think 4 gigs or is it 4 or 8 i think it's got 8 gigs and 1 128 of of uh storage so yeah um but i love it it's it's nice it's very nice um if you were going between the Pro 2020 and XPS 13, I think with the Pro 2020, and this is not AI ML related, but um, it's not AI or ML related, but I, I think I, or I would hope that they fix the keyboard by now. That's That was for the longest time. That's been a peeve of mine, the keyboard, and I think many people uh, don't appreciate the keyboard. I mean, right now I'm using a mechanical one, so going from the mechanical to... Uh, something where you don't get that tactile feedback, it's uh, it's a little bit frustrating. Um, as and as it as it pertains to to AI and machine learning tasks, right? Uh, I would say it depends. Um, I I really like the XPS devices, the latest line of XPS devices, not the latest by you know the one that they came out with the 15 and the 17, um, but the one just before the one that they just released. Uh, they tried to fix a few things. And I think that they messed up along the way. I, I heard of some complaints. I know that traditionally the XPS devices have been amazing. Um, and I've considered getting one myself at, at some point. Um, but I think the most recent generation before this, the current release, uh, I, I heard a few complaints from people like the XPS, XPS 15. Um, it, it, I think like with overheating uh, and the XPS 13, um, it was it would do some weird things. Like I've, I've seen f some folks computers at it. It was doing weird things. Um, but overall it's, it's, it's a nice device. Um, I, I would say the, the, um, one way that, or one reason why I would, so for AI, AI and ML tasks, I think I would go with whatever allows me to work with Linux. Right. And I think with things like WSL2, and again, this is, you know, me sort of taking off the, the Microsoft hat. Um, I think with stuff, so, so, you know, your mileage may vary in, in my recommendations. So 
I think having the ability to work with WSL2 and, ha and having sort of the, the, the lin being able to have a Linux environment on your Windows PC so you get the best of Windows and you get the best sort of the best of, of Linux, right? Um, I think that it makes that environment enticing. The other thing is that now you're going to have, uh, I think for the, was it for a Windows terminal? Uh, let me see if I can find it. GPU support Windows terminal. Yeah, there it is. So the Windows terminal. Uh, uh, um, terminal WSL2. There you go. So in the second half of the year, WSL will support GPU compute workflows, right? So again, right, that's just another, and it's it, it's specifically aimed at this case scenario, right? Now, that's not to say that with Max, you couldn't get that. Actually, I don't even know if Max, I don't know what the GPU story is for Max. I know traditionally it wasn't a great story. Um... But uh, but I don't know if it's gotten better. So so my comment on that end, it's gonna be like I don't know enough about the new devices to able to to be able to say uh you know which one is better. I can speak from a from a, like a Windows device side of things, right? Um and and but yeah. So so long story short, I don't know enough about the Mac to be able to go one way or another. I I. I know that there are some things that make it enticing, especially especially when it comes to, um, especially when it comes to uh, scoring, right? So for training for training purposes, I don't know if it's I don't I, I don't know enough about it to know whether it's a great uh, way to run machine learning workflows, right, on a Mac. But for scoring, like I said, like if you if you're putting your 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 um, your model on a on an iPhone. Or you're putting it on an iPad or whatever it is, right? They have these dedicated processors for these workflows, right? So, so, so that's one place that I could see that that I could see it really um, shining, right? So, Surface Book three, to um, I I've I've seen it. I haven't gotten a chance to to tinker with it. Uh, I do have a Surface Book two uh, with GPU, so I have the 15 inch version with GPU. Um, I forget which one I have, but it does have GPU and, and, you know, I've, I've heard mixed things about it, like with surface device. So, so what I'm streaming on right now is a surface laptop, the first gen, um, and you know, clearly it's handling it just, just fine. Right. The stream, uh, the surface book two, that's the one that I have for work. And, and I've trained, uh, I've leveraged the GPU for, um, I leverage the GPU for for training deep learning models on the Surface Book Two, and it and it it works just fine. It works great. I have had no complaints with my Surface Book Three, so I would expect the Surface Book sorry with the Surface Book Two. So I would expect the Surface Book Three, uh, to be even better, right? <clears throat> but I can't say for sure. And I would say yes if if you have the SP, you know the Surface Book Three, you have your GPU, um, you have WSL two, and then the coming GPU uh, training uh, support. With it, I, I think it is a good combination. Uh, I don't see how you could go wrong there. Again, the, the GPU support, is it sounds like it's it's still going to be uh, something that's fairly new. So, you know, like with all, you know, version one of devices, you know, I, ideally you'd want it to work. But, of course, <clears throat> you know, uh, there's always issues and things like that. But, but yeah, I, I would say Surface Book 3 and WSL2 uh, would be a, a really, really good combination. And, uh, yeah, AMD... Yeah, exactly. A AMD. Um, something to also be wary of is, um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the AI machine learning workflows there. Uh, how can I say this? They tend to work better with with Nvidia, right? Um, or or working with AMD, it kind of like um, it. Uh, it's not the easiest, right? <clears throat> so so yeah there so having that nvidia uh being able to to run on nvidia uh, gpus that's um that's in a in a certain to a certain extent it's a plus but yeah I, um yeah right there's 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 metal and then there's performance shaders um yeah so there's those um 
but uh but yeah i mean it's uh if, if you if you're looking for one yeah i i would say like the x cuda cuda dana not much yep exactly exactly yeah yeah it seems like like nvidia is certainly um the more popular one I, I i think that the market is starting to shift a little bit um but yeah nvidia certainly has a dominance on, on that market um let's see cornmel tools what else was there that i was looking at here oh yeah we left off at the xcode model viewer so so are, are you what what are you folks running um your ai and ml workflows on now and 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 what has your experience been and as you're answering that uh controller is now available controller uk a so deploy uk a to create a new model to deploy happen now the model can never be with the proposed okay yeah oh man this has been painful i did see though that um that we got a response on our. <laughs> See, could this get changed to Ubuntu installation or VM? Uh, yep. Just to clarify, that works fine. We got Ubuntu install your machine. Ubuntu installation. Um, yeah, I can do that. I can make those changes uh, sorry folks uh, code readme going to installation or VM so mostly on Windows and Linux you see collab notebooks NVIDIA all the way fortunately I don't have dedicated rig right now yeah <laughs> Maybe I'll, I should start streaming on. Um, I should start streaming on my PC. So I built a PC. Uh, I don't turn it on very often because so it's it's uh, it's actually not even a PC. It's like a server, and I got uh, one twenty eight. I have two cores. Um, sorry, not not two cores. I have two CPUs, and it's got one hundred twenty eight gigs of uh, of RAM. Uh, but as you may imagine, the power consumption on that is, um, it's a lot. So I, I, I rarely turn it on because I don't want to pay a high electricity bill, um, uh, which, I mean, I guess I'm already paying it through Azure, so I might as well just do it on my own PC. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm trying to say Ubuntu installation or VM. Okay. Let's see. Setting up this bundle requires Ubuntu solution VM. Okay, I think I like this. Uh, let's see here. Get status. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turning it on is uh, yeah. And uh, when I turn it on, even if I like close the door to the to the office here, um, you'll still hear it. It it sounds like a like a jet engine. It's just like humming and and. Uh, yeah but it's it's good it's it's fast it's great um and i got a gpu on it too so so i can take advantage of that um but yeah i mean during the winter though if i turn it on i don't have to pay for heat because it basically heats up my whole house or at least 
at least the office. back here awesome all right um, okay so this doesn't seem to be working or doing what we needed to do. Um, probably going to have to take a step back here. And, and just really think through how I want to go about doing this. Because I don't think... It, I don't think it should be this hard to set this up. It really shouldn't. I mean, at least the instructions say that it's easy. So I don't know why. Why it's so difficult to, to, to get this set up. It, it, it shouldn't be. Um, so so what we can do or what i'll do is um probably call it call it a day for today again another unsuccessful stream well I, I wouldn't call it completely unsuccessful i would say uh it was successful in the sense that hopefully we help other folks by this pr that we put in to help clarify the instructions um so it wasn't a complete waste uh but in terms of getting our, our, our Qflow server set up and deployed, it was not successful. So I'll, I'll have to keep playing with this. I'll, I'll, I'll keep tinkering with it, see what I could do to get this running, um, do, do a little bit of research and, and, um, and hopefully come back. Um, I might do a stream on Friday, like I said. I don't know. Um, there's no work. So that's great. Uh, but I also don't have plans to go anywhere, uh, I don't think. Um, so, yeah. If if not Friday, we'll come back Monday. Rested, relaxed after the long break uh, here that we have here uh, because of Independence Day. And, uh, yeah. But I appreciate you folks bearing with me and, and suffering with me uh, trying to get this deployed. It's unfortunate we couldn't get the payoff of, of actually deploying our our single node cluster but uh but i hope we learned a few a thing or two here uh of all the stuff that doesn't work and how and hopefully i know i certainly do have a a, a newfound appreciation for folks who who set up these uh and configure these uh these infrastructure um systems right but uh yeah anyway I, I will be back maybe maybe Friday. Uh, I still haven't decided, but most definitely Monday. And if I don't see you till then, uh, take care. And thanks again for joining. Talk to you folks later.